This is a retro gaming console soldering kit that I bought on Amazon for about $20 over a year ago. About a week ago, I decided to assemble it. To turn it on, you press this button here and the unit lights up like this. Now, the best game on here, you can see my record of 212 lines, is Tetris. If we go like this, you can see you can rotate the part like this, press rotation, and then you can slam them down like that. So you, you play Tetris. Oops, just made an error. I'm gonna turn that off. This isn't a Tetris demo. I mean, you get the rough idea. You can, you're trying to clear lines. We'll go ahead like this and see, it goes beep when you clear a line. And you're trying to arrange them in layers where they can solve. So for example, if we create a layer defect and then shove this piece in there, it'll clear that line in between. This is um, just a classic game. It's been published in more than 64 different gaming platforms. And I'll turn it off. You get the idea. Okay. This is called a microcontroller, this chipset and this chipset here. It runs on three AAA batteries, which produce 4.5 volts DC. Red is positive and black is negative. Those cables come through the board right here and they're soldered down. They're soldered down right there behind the battery to the contacts on the board. The board logic contains trace paths, these lines here, that connect the different pins that you solder. There's connections for all the buttons, and they go to different parts of the microcontroller. This is called a dot matrix LED display. So it displays information by lighting up the LEDs. The software is stored on here in memory, and it runs in RAM. This is a numerical LED display, very similar to a lot of alarm clocks. This is a push button. So when you push it in, it locks to turn it on like that. And then when you push it again, it disconnects and turns it off. That's a beeper or a speaker right there. This is a 220 farad capacitor. The kit is made of acrylic. You can see these standoffs. It's screwed together with Phillips screws, top and bottom. There's a thread interlock that goes through the board that locks the bottom steel one to the brass top. You can see how these chips are soldered down. Here are these display chips. Now I'm gonna show you the kit the way it comes. So the acrylic pieces Come like this with a paper backing that you have to remove and then there's side segments like this these are the two long sides and these are the two short sides I ordered another one since Meg and I had fun playing with this one so I ordered another kit this is an updated kit so here this microcontroller does all the work. It doesn't have a separate chip, so you don't have to solder that down. Correspondingly, this newer version is an easier kit to build. The hardest part of this kit was actually bridge soldering the chip to the board. So you have to heat the pad on the top, heat the pad on the bottom, and then drag solder with the soldering iron. I believe there's 20 pins on each side, so that was the most difficult part. Well, in this latest board revision, you can see all the trace paths going to the display here and to the switches over here. And then if we flip it over, we can see that from the same chipset point, there's pins going up to this other display or there's trace paths going up for the other display part. And then these trace go down to the buttons over here and get passed through the board these are called holes and they're tinned. These are copper trace paths. It's a high quality board too. It's stiff. If I try flexing it, it's a rigid ceramic. You can hear it's a hard, hard board. 
This is an insulating coating on both sides. And these are nickel plated here, or tinned as they call it. That makes it easier to solder uh, to them. In the box, there's nice instructions. They give you a, a guide for how to make a good solder. You might pause the video right here if you don't know about soldering, about how to make a good solder pool around the pin to the board or to the logic. And then there's step-by-step -step instructions. You first solder the USB. This one's only using power, so you don't have to do the three small pins. You just do the four corners and the, two, the plus and minus power, which are called ground and VCC. And they tell you red and black, so, it's, so to be perfectly clear. Here they show you remove the protective film from the dot matrix. You line up the number on the bottom of the unit with the spot on the board. So if we look here, there's on the bottom of these displays, there's a number printed like that. And there's a, a small peg and that lines up with the peg on the board right here where the arrow is pointing to right there and there okay so these are push fit into some foam if i pull them out you can see there's pins on the back and the small one has the same idea and those are the electrical connections to light up the led segments uh, with dc current from the batteries controlled by the controller this is the battery container. It holds three AAA batteries. The red is the positive, the black is the negative. They're a very fine wire, maybe 20 gauge or something. Very low current to run this unit. It's highly power efficient. Here's the bag with the capacitor, the switches, the beeper, the standoffs, offsets, the screws, the, the push buttons everything you need to assemble the unit. And they even include the strong micro USB. I forget what this one's called, but it's much stronger than a regular micro USB. The, the plug is much more robust. It's a much stronger connection. And if you look at the, the male and female interaction on here, when this is plugged in, it's a very strong connection, much stronger than that flimsy little micro USB that's on typical Android devices. This was a much stronger USB type. It's traditional USB type A on the other end. So you just plug this into a one amp power supply or half amp power supply, like a cell phone charging brick, and you can power the unit like that. Although I went with the battery route, so it's portable like a Game Boy. All right, so if we move along through the instructions, they give tips. You can solder the first pin to line it up and then press it firm and then solder the rest. That's a hint for the dot matrix display. Then there's the digital tube. You install that up there. They show you correct soldering here. They give you alignment for the capacitor and show you where the pins come through. You have to cut off the excess Pin. The long pin is plugged into the positive pole and the short pin is plugged into the negative pole. It's labeled positive and negative in the instructions on the board too. Right there, it shows you positive and negative. They've made this idiot proof. Anybody can solder with this. It's probably designed for children to be able to complete effectively. And you do the keys and the buzzer they show you examples. Then you do the power switch. Then you attach the battery box to the rear acrylic. You put the cables through like this. You can cut them to length. I just wound them up, obviously, in my existing one. You can see all the extra wire in there. I just, I just soldered them with the ends that were already cut on the cable. 
That way I didn't have to strip the wire or anything, but you see that's an example of how to do it. Then you use the standoffs mounted to the board. They're copper pillars. I said brass, but um, you mount those and then you fix the acrylic base plate and you screw it down. Then you put the key cap cover on using an, in the four side acrylic pieces. This is a little bit of a finger puzzle. When it's finished, it'll look like this. And you put the screws in at the top. They say battery and USB cannot be powering it at the same time. So you have to choose either USB, a five volt power supply, or run it on batteries. Here's the schematic uh, or circuit diagram. Tells you what all the pins are, how they work, what they're doing, like that. And then from the Ito put at outlook.com, uh, thank you for buying their product. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna mount NTE Kester Electronics Silver Solder here. That's what we're using. This is a Yuha 939D soldering iron. I have it set to 525 Fahrenheit. You can dial the temperature up and down. That heats up the end of this tip. We clean the tip on a wet sponge like this and on this brass material here, soldering wool. I also have a small cup of rosin that you can apply to the tip. You can see it starts to smoke a little bit. If there's rosin on there, I'll just clean that off. That helps solder flow into joints. If we go to the diagram here, we see that the first thing to install is the charge port. So you see, you place the charge port here like this, and then I'm gonna use a small piece of blue painter's tape like that to hold the charge port in place while I solder. And what we're going for is just to heat the pins on the board. And we're only soldering the main four points here and then these two small points. You don't have to do the inner three pins. Those would be very hard to do. So.
Getting the paper off these acrylic pieces is actually the trickiest part. I find that using my fingernail to scrape up a little piece like that really helps. You just kind of defeat the corners. I don't know what these are called, they're like an electronics manipulator, but you can grab the tiny leading edge like this, and it allows you to pull the paper off or the protector or whatever you want to call it. It tears very easily, so once you get some you know, sometimes you gotta keep going a little bit. It's not entirely without challenge, but if you get it good, then you can just get a nice clean removal. Although sometimes there's an edge, you just scratch with your fingernail like that. Not too hard, you don't wanna scratch the acrylic. But you keep going along anywhere you can scratch up a edge you just grab it with this tool and it's a little more precise than your fingertips so you can get a nice pull like that and then you just keep doing this for all of these parts Okay, when you go to assemble this, you're gonna be putting this one side piece so that your USB port is visible through the side. These slot fit into these cutouts, but they're kind of loose like this. So you gotta hold with your hands. And then you can use gravity on the top one and then use your hand so you've got your hand holding like this, all of these, okay? So then you hold it level. Now you're going to drop the front plate on. You're going to drop the front plate on and make sure it lines up with everything. So all your corners and tabs and the keys and pins and everything else, okay? So once it's aligned, now you're going to take the remaining small screws and put them in every corner and tighten it down. Okay, so as you can see, that's our old unit. We'll just leave it there like that for a second. We're gonna flip this over. You put the flat side against the spring, press into place, flat side against the spring, push into place, flat side against the spring, push into place, and with any luck, it lights up, and there you can see it. Now we're going to test it, and see if it works. And we can see that it does work. Yeah, works good. This is now Meg's. She liked playing with mine so much, I bought her one and that whole assembly video is to show you how to make one. I know it's kind of long. Oops, that was an error. Cool thing is you can recover. Oh, see, yeah, almost, there's another error. You gotta focus. I'm actually playing by watching through the screen on my phone that's doing the recording. So it's even more bizarre. But I can see it. 
the pixels are nice and big. It also works in the dark really well because it's completely backlit, which is really cool. I love the red-orange color of the pixels too. If you um, contact the vendor for this item on Amazon, they can provide you with a little bit of the source code if you want to tinker around under the hood uh, for the um, code for the microcontroller. It's an ST something electronics uh, MCU, um, you know, eight kilobits of RAM or some really, it's very low power. And that's why it can run on three AAA batteries for, I'm not exactly sure how long. My other one's been going for many hours. Oops, all right, well, we'll kill it. We've tested it. We can see that the other one's working if we go like that. This was the original one where it has both chipsets. I made, um, you can pause the game too by hitting this top button. If you, um, the, this button rotates the part, which can be in any of four orientations. So there's seven different parts with four orientations or 28 possible part configurations. Um, and the idea here is you clear lines by filling up the line. So when a line fills up, it clears, and that counts as a line, and you, you see the line count up there. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to win by clearing as many as you can. Now my current record is 212. I did better as a child when I was playing on Nintendo with a controller, um, but I've only been playing with this device for a few days, maybe a, a week or something. I don't know, I didn't keep track. But um, I've had a lot of fun. It's still on its original set of batteries. I bet it has a dozen hours or more on it. Um, I've had many attempts get up into the 180 uh, range. So you can force the parts down faster if you wanna go quickly. Um, there's many different playing techniques and styles. Uh, you can do like a, a void blank like that if you don't have a good play. Sometimes it's better just to build a layer and get going because you might be getting the same bad part that's not good for your existing solution uh, layer for three or four more part distributions. And so sometimes it's better just to play to solve the layer where you are. And if you make mistakes like that, you're game over. So there you can see, it tells you at the end, if you wanna play again, you can start over. I'm gonna turn it off though. So there we can see if we turn them both on side by side, they boot up about the same speed. I'd say this one's a tad faster. That's a new design, so there they are. And this one shows my record, 212. Just to verify there, it saves your, your high score record. There is no high score record on here because it's brand new. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Cheers, and good luck with your soldering kit. I'll put a link in the description.